We gave Ralph, that kid who died in the accident, a burial at sea. The man in charge of that facility has been severely punished. But ever since, the kids have been acting strange. It's obvious they've lost their trust in adults. I was getting reports of them ignoring the staff, or getting insolent, and even violent. And a few days later, several of the kids did a disappearing act. They snuck into choppers and shipping containers and got off base. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. These kids were born in a war zone, and forced to grow up as war fighters. If they're left alone, war is how they'll die. But I thought we showed them there are other reasons to live. I never liked having children on Mother Base. But the thought of them going back to the battlefield and picking up their old lifestyle is something I can't stomach. It makes me think of Chico, nine years ago. We have to get those kids back. Hell, they know too much about our operation. I never expected even the kids to betray us. Snake, you remember the White Mamba? Of course, he's been going by Eli since we brought him on base. He was the leader of the child soldier unit we took out of that village and into our protection. Well, according to the kids you brought back here, all the escapees were especially close to Eli. There's reason to suspect he's behind all six escapes. We've already detained him. I'll be questioning him shortly. Wait, wait. You'll be? Ocelot. You're incapable of taking an impartial stance with those kids. Question them all you want. It'll get you nowhere. Ocelot, you get too many kicks from your art of interrogation. It's not a matter of art. It's about quick, minimal strokes of psychological warfare. That's what gets the answers. And it's the best way to keep both questioner and subject safe. The risks only increase the more an interrogation drags on. At that point, it causes as much pain to the inflictor as the inflicted. Like I said, too many kicks. What I'm trying to tell you is we need quick results. Otherwise, it'll be too little, too late. I know that. And besides, I know the subject. I won't go overboard with a kid. Forget it. You're not needed. Snake, we we'll want to question the other kids, too. Be sure to bring them all back. Snake, about the escaped children. Eli confessed. The way he tells it, they wanted to go back to the battlefield. Don't rob them of their freedom, he said. If you bring them all back, there will be consequences. <sighs> Next to be asking for our surrender. Consequences? What consequences? No idea. That's all I have for now. You're too attached to those kids. Stop protecting Eli. Listen to yourself. Let me question him, and we'll get some real answers. Not necessary. I'll report as and when. Boss, we found weapons in the children's section of the living quarters. As you know, weapons are strictly off-limits. We've got some rule breakers. The weapons we found were handmade. Blades ground out of knives and forks, a couple of bow guns built out of scrap, and explosives made using detergents. And get this, the explosives were tightly packed with nails. The kids put the blame on, you guessed it, Eli. I guess that's what he meant by consequences. I questioned him about it. But this time he claimed they want to be put out on missions. Send us to the battlefield, he says. Miller, enough is enough. You've protected him too much already. It's my turn to question him. Protected? What Eli's doing is issuing a threat. Comply with my demands or I'll respond with force. But it'll be war at this rate. Forks and soap aren't gonna kill us, but some of them will end up dead. Is that what you want? <sighs> now, I hate to say it, but they want to be on the battlefield. It's time you gave up this fantasy. Eli, he said they'd rise up against us if we bring the last kid back. There, you see? Ignore his demands. Don't let him return to quarters. That attitude is contagious. We lose control over them for good. For the time being, we've confiscated those handmade weapons. We're bumping up security and the number of psychiatric counselors. As for Eli, he needs some very special care. You mean solitary? Well, we can't leave him in contact with the other kids. If you won't do it, I will. 
Boss, keep working on extracting those kids. The kids you brought back to base have laid out the situation. They all escaped to each of their home villages, who were trying to get home and lost their way. Not that homesickness is gonna explain everything we've seen. Each of their home villages? They were trying to raise troops for the rebellion. You really think these kids have an armed uprising in them? You read the report of the security team member who had a rock thrown at him. There'll be a riot if we don't do something. And Miller, this is because you didn't act fast enough. Fine. I'll admit you were right this time. <sighs> Seal off the kids' quarters from outside contact before it's too late. All right. Eli said his rebellion would start when the last kid is brought back, right? You better be ready to meet him head on if it really happens. Yeah. You should have left it to me in the first place. Boss, they're just kid... We have a responsibility to see that those kids make it. It's not about feeling protective or the pros and cons. I hate kids. That's exactly what I heard from the people who raised me. People who abandoned me, more like. That's the spark that kept me going, you know? I wanted to show those adults what I was made of. Wanted to get back at them one day. But before I knew it, I was all grown up. Never saw it coming. All of a sudden, people treated me as an adult. Some adult I turned out to be. But I feel like if my life had been different, if the adults I knew had been different, I could have grown up better. Yeah, that's it, all right. I wanted to use those kids to test that theory. That's all this was. From their point of view, I'm no different from the assholes who gave me a hard time. When this is all blown over, I'll talk it out with them, if that's still possible. Boss, there are still kids out there. Bring them back safe. Boss, it's me. Eli's revealed what he wants. He wants to speak with you, with Big Boss. He just said, bring my father here. Eli's too smart for his own good. No way to tell what he's thinking. All we know for sure is his men are important to him. That means we can use the escaped kids as leverage in any negotiation. Once you've brought the last one back, I'll interrogate him. If the kids do rise up, we'll meet them full force. End of story. I didn't want things to turn out like this. We could have prevented it, but it's too late now. If Eli means to take this all the way, he's gonna force us to do the same. Boss, go get that last kid. The whole base is busy getting ready for Beast Day. Miller has finished writing his song, so I went with Professor Galvez to listen to it. Miller was really into it, humming away as he played the song on his acoustic guitar. But the song melody did not match up with the guitar chords at all, and it sounded more like a mess than music. Miller's very enthusiastic, but I think he's tone deaf. I guess the guitar backing sounded good at least. But as I was wondering how to break it to Miller, Professor Galvez took out an odd instrument. It was just two antennas sticking out of a box, more like a radio than a musical instrument. He said it was invented by the Soviets, but why would Professor Galvez own a Soviet Russian instrument? I asked him, and he told me music has no borders. Well, I cannot argue with that. Good music is something people of any nation can appreciate. Why not abandon war and just make music together? But anyway, the professor offered to try playing the melody on his instrument in time with Miller's guitar. It was like something from another world. But somehow, it fit Miller's guitar backing really well. It even gave the song a charming, down-home kind of feeling. Miller was overjoyed. That is it. That is my melody right there, he said. It sounded totally different from when he sang it. But hearing the professor's version, I thought I could probably sing it. Then Miller hit me with the next bombshell. Buzz, you write the lyrics. I did not know whether to scream or to run out of the room. There was only one week left until Peace Day. I have 
have spoken enough. Your men can take it from here. Will you permit me to rest? Have something to eat? I thought you don't eat. I can subsist without food. But there is more to the act of eating than nourishment. We receive nature's blessings and reaffirm our part in it. And in doing so, we express our gratitude. <laughs> Sorry, it's um, hearing you say you don't need to eat and that you're a part of nature in the same breath. Anyway, uh, what can we get you? Not exactly a five-star restaurant, but the kitchen's used to serving a lot of different appetites. Hamburgers. Uh, hamburgers? Even we, Dine, have become Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> and you just can't let them go. Well, as far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. The victory of capitalism. Hmm. Your people suffered so much at the hands of America. And you ask for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can know. But I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. A single dish providing a balanced helping of nature's blessings. Meat, grain, and vegetables. How could anyone hate such a magnificent thing? Says the guy who can survive on photosynthesis. Balance has nothing to do with it. You just like a good burger. That is also true. Be warned, though. I have very high standards. <sighs> Don't worry. I do, too. All right, then. One good, old-fashioned, all-American icon coming up. <laughs> I look forward to it. I hope you bought a better hamburger this time, Kazuhira. Right. Well, the last one was lacking in every way. The patty was too thin, the bun too dry, and the lettuce days old at best. <laughs> hey, that was a hundred percent all beef patty, and no shortening in the bun either. Mm. Nature's blessings. Unadulterated, in hamburger form. Is that it? But when taste falls short, so does our gratitude to nature. Making such precious blessings unpalatable is sacrilege. I... I hate to admit it, but... I think you're right. I should have known better than to settle for second best. That's why I had him run some more R&D develop a new burger. In fact, one of our researchers just dropped by with the latest results. Here it is. See how you like this. We shall see indeed. Did you say... product? <laughs> 